Brother Mamba, children of God, today I would like to discuss why it is important for us to seek the face of the Lord every time we need a ruler, a leader, or a person who is supposed to take charge. This affects people in families, it affects people in businesses, it affects people politically, and in many other spheres. It's very, very important, children of God, that before we choose any person to take over a certain form of leadership, it be business, uh, family, or even... Um, in political angles, we seek the first of the Lord so that God may guide us. When we go to the Bible, you know, reading from the book of 1 Samuel chapter 8, you know, we see a situation where Israel asked for a king. That was a time where Samuel was the judge of the land. At that time, God, for his children, had chosen to give them judges to run the affairs of the nation. But the time came because Samuel, who was God-fearing, had children being Abijah and Joel who were not God-fearing, you know, they came to an understanding that after Samuel had departed from earth or he had transitioned, you know, the, the children that he had you are not going to take care of um, the nation Israel properly. So the Bible in the book of um, uh, 1 Samuel 8 reads, When Samuel grew old, from verse 1, he appointed his sons as Israel's leaders. The name of his firstborn was Joel, and the name of his second was Abijah, and they served at Beersheba. But his sons did not follow his ways. They turned aside after dishonest gain and accepted bribes and perverted justice. A situation, children of God, where a God-fearing man is able to follow the instructions of the Lord. But his children, you know, they, 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 they start to follow a different path that God never intended his children, you know, uh, to follow. You know, and because leaders of, of, of the Israelites came to realize that, you know, they came to an understanding to avoid Joel and Abijah's leadership. You know, they went to Samuel, their father, to say, give us a king. You know, the Bible has said that this did not please Samuel. You know, so uh, verse 4 says, so all the leaders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah. They said to him, you are old and your sons do not follow your ways. Now appoint a king to lead us, such as all the other nations have. Instead of those leaders, you know, seeking the face of the Lord, they made a decision that be, they, may, uh, they believed that was right. And they went to Samuel to say, yes, we know that your children are not doing the right thing. Instead of asking God's will, they made a decision on their own and they enforced this on Samuel. Verse 5, you know, uh, verse, uh, verse 6, the Bible reads, but when they said, Give us a king to lead us. This displeased Samuel. So he prayed to the Lord. Have you seen the difference? The leadership of Samuel was one based on God's direction and guidance. The leadership of the leaders of Israel was based on their own counsel. So the decision that Samuel made, though he was a paramount leader at that time, Samuel did not use you know, his instruments of power to denounce their, 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 their request. But he first, their, their, you know, he went to, to the Lord and if he went into the presence of the Lord. And this is what God said. And the Lord taught him, listen to all that the people are saying to you. It is not you they have rejected, but they have rejected me as their king, as they have done from the day I brought them out of Egypt until this day, forsaking me and saving other gods. So they are doing to you. Now listen to them, but warn them solemnly and let them know what the king who will reign over them will claim as his rights. The fact that you human beings make a decision to say we need a leader does not mean that even if they were to agree and say this is the decision you are going to follow, you know they are going to be successful at it. It's very important when it comes to leadership to seek God first. When, when you look at nations, republics, it be in Africa, Europe, or whichever you know, continent, most of the times, though not always, we choose a leader out of our own mindset. And when we start to go through problems, we go and ask the Lord. That is an error, children of God. Before you choose a leader, go to God. It is much safer. You know, you avoid a lot of turmoil, a lot of burden when you see God's first to say, God, who is supposed to lead us now? Then making a decision on your own. And after you get disappointed, that is when you go now to God to say, God, we need your grace. We need, chan -chan. sometimes you even go with the same wrong person that you might have chosen. What is that, children of God? 
It's like a child, you know, choosing to get married, you know, on his or on her own without, you know, informing the parents. And after things turn sour, then you go to your parents. I mean, even humanly speaking, parents would be like, in the first place, you never told us that you are getting married. You never allowed us to bless this, this relationship. You know, why is it that you did that? So sometimes we bring in a process of delay because we choose to depend on, on our own thinking. You know, the Bible does not encourage us to depend on our own thinking. In fact, the Lord teaches us never to lean on our own understanding, but trust in the Lord and the understanding and guidance of the Lord. That is the right direction. So in countries where there are pe people are not led by kings, but maybe by presidents and prime ministers, it's important children of God. It's important children of God. I make this an emphasis that first we see God before you choose somebody you must bow down and ask God father what is your will in this situation many countries take votes and the like you go to God and ask him give me the light show me who is supposed to be in charge who is coming from your own heart my God let me not choose what people want let me not choose what I want but what you have decided why when you have a problem tomorrow, you are going to run to God because in the first place, you inquired of him to give you a decision. When it comes to choosing, you don't need to move corporately. You need your understanding as an individual so that God gives you his insight and his will and plan. Whoever stands in countries where there are elections, you know, you have maybe many people standing in different positions. When you see God, God shall show you. God does not give, you know, uh, does not, will not show us because based on a party, but he will look at the hearts. When Samuel went to, you know, anoint a son out of the house of Jesse, the Bible says he looked at Eliab and these other brothers, and out of his own heart, he said, surely, these are, this is a man, this is a son I'm supposed to, to anoint. God rejected Eliab. He went to the, to the other brothers. God continued to reject those people. And he said, I do not choose as man chooses. Man chooses from, you know, from the outside. But I look at the heart. We need to learn to seek the face of God. So that when it comes to God choosing people that we are going to give the instruments of power for prep countries that are nations, God will guide us children of God. We are going to avoid a lot of havoc, a lot of suffering suffering and pain, a lot of disappointment, because God looks at the heart. He does not look at the outward appearance. Some people may look rich, others may look poor. And when somebody is poor at times, they'll do anything. And you mistake them for humility, you mistake them for a good heart, you mistake them for so many things. You mistake them to be people who give, and yet their motive is totally different, children of God. So, let us be like that. Now, let us learn what happened to these people who never sought the face of the Lord. Samuel knew what was coming, but people who believed they were right never knew what was coming. So in verse 10, the Bible says, Samuel told all the words of the Lord to the people who were asking him for a king. He said, this is what the king who will reign over you will claim has his rights. The person that you want to put in charge of leadership who is not going to serve you, but he shall come to claim his rights. Sometimes we put people in positions thinking they will save us without knowing that actually they are going to claim their rights. Their rights, whether you believe it is their right or not, to them, that will be their right. And when a person does not come to save people for their rights, Look at the scripture. The Bible says, this is what the king who will reign over you will claim as his rights. This is a man who was coming not to defend the rights of human beings, but his own rights. So if you are going to stand in the way of Saul, you are going to die. Or Saul was going to crush you. Because according to Saul, what mattered was not the rights of the people he was ruling, but his rights. Understood there. That is important. The, the, verse 11 continues to say, He will take your sons and make them serve with his chariots and horses. They will run in front of his chariots. Some he will assign to be commanders of thousands and commanders of fifties, and others to plow, to plow his ground and reap his harvests, and still others to make weapons of war and equipment for his chariots. Observe, whatever is made here is his. There's nothing like for the people. Whatever he did was his. The Bible is saying his land, his chariots, his weapons of war. There are people that we put at the pedestal. 
thinking they are there to save us. And whenever they come out, we celebrate without knowing that actually they are there to save themselves, children of God. You can never change a heart that is there to save him or herself because you know, that is who they are. So when you ask the Lord, God shall give you a man after his own heart. You need leadership coming from God's heart. You need a man or a woman who is there to save God. Not somebody who has different opinions. The Bible in the book of Jude says, Beware of wolves who hide in sheep's skin. A person can be bad inside, but up outwardly they behave totally different. They behave like, you know, you've seen somebody coming straight from heaven. In fact, that is what the Bible teaches us when it looks at the Antichrist. It talks of how he shall be good at first, and then he shall show his colors later on. When he shall sit at the seat of power, then he shall destroy whoever shall stand in his way. This anti Antichrist spirit is not going to start in future. It has already started, children of God. So, we learn that this is a man who is always about himself whatever he had now became his instead of saving people remember when christ was talking about leadership he said he who wants a leader or he wants to be a leader must be a servant of others that is the kingdom principle of a leader in the kingdom of god but outside the kingdom of god whoever becomes a leader starts to torment to suppress to crush whoever stands in their way and it is all about them when you look at the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God is all about souls. The Bible says in John 3, 16, that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He gave out. So true leadership gives out. True leadership serves. When you are serving, you are simply giving out. Of course, there are benefits that you get as a child of God, but it should not be out of your greed. It must be a reward from God. The Bible encourages us never to stop doing good because at the end of it all, the Lord shall bless those that do good according to his will and purpose. But people that we choose out of our own eyes because they are eloquent, because they are educated, because maybe they are rich, or whatever influence they may have, children of God, you and me shall be disappointed. Even in families, when you choose a man to be an administrator because they are already rich, you don't know what they are going to do. Many people have become very, very disappointed with the administrators they've chosen. In their families, when somebody died, somebody of great influence and wealth died, why? We looked outwardly and never sought the Lord to show us the true hearts of people. So that is very, very, very important. The Bible in verse 13 says, He will take your daughters to be perfumers and cooks and breakers. He will take the best of your fields and vineyards and olive grooves and give them to his attendants this is a man who only made rich people that were close to him people that treated him you know they are, they are, they are, these are people who are yes burners people who always say yes to whatever this man says so the bible is saying if you are not a yes burner kind of man this man will come and get your wealth it's a Put a system that shall be able to take your wealth so that he gives, he feeds it to those that only support him. This is a kind of government that's so implemented. And this government is very, very common on this earth, children of God. Why? Most of the times we've never sought the first of the Lord, but we looked at resumes, we looked at the influence, we looked at the outward support a person had without asking God who he really wanted in such places. You know, so, you know, the Bible also says, you know, um, in verse um, the, verse 15, that is a man who is going to take a, a tenth and the like, you know. And, you know, verse 18 quickly says, when that day comes, when this man treats you so bad, verse 18, when that day comes, you will cry out for relief from the king who you have chosen, but the Lord will not answer you in that day. When you choose a king that God has not asked or has not ordained, when you choose a man out of your own understanding and power, instead of depending on the understanding of the Lord, when you do not lean on the understanding of God, you will suffer. Many people have prayed, but you know, those prayers, they don't go anywhere. Because according to scripture, the Bible is saying, when you suffer because you never acknowledge God in the first place, yes, you shall pray. Are you getting that? You shall look for relief, you shall cry for help, but that king will not give you anything. You know, and the Bible says that the Lord will not answer you in that day. How does the Lord answer? When we pray to him, when you choose a wrong system, it does not mean that every time you pray, God will answer you according to the, the prayers you've prayed. Sometimes we suffer even after 
many prayers because of the decisions we made when putting people either in families to become administrators for children who are orphans in businesses sometimes we choose people because of their education who tramp upon people sometimes it can be in nations sometimes it can even be in kingdoms where people choose kings David was chosen not as a president but as a king and you know a king does not live in terms a king has to die for the government system to change so God was somebody who was looking for a man after all in his own heart so let us not make decisions out of our own understanding but seek the face of the Lord first. You and God must interact. God, what is your will in my family? Who should take care of these children? Because even in families, some people will say, I'll take the children because they've seen the wealth. They want to take the children, not because they love the children, but because they know that when they take the children, even the wealth of the deceased shall be there as children of God. Let us open our minds. Let us be as people who have a sound mind based on the word of God that we receive. Before you make any decision to choose leadership, seek the face of the Lord. Let God show you their heart. Let God show you the purpose of Every man, every man has a purpose. If God would give us the spirit of discernment because we've waited for him and we've sought him, God will make sure that our lives shall be a blessing and not a curse. So remember, all leadership comes from God, yes. But what matters is, is it God who has chosen or it is you who is choosing out of your own power? There are countries, for example, where people use uh, maybe cards of different nature to maybe um, put somebody in power. The question is, is it you who is putting that person in power? Or you've sought the face of the Lord? Sometimes the most unpopular people may, may be the, the will of the Lord. And sometimes the unpopular person may not even be popular before God. And at, at other times, the most popular pe person can be the will of the Lord. At times, not even close. So when we, feel, when we seek the face of the Lord, we shall be guided children of God. I'm Brother Mamba. Thank you for watching.